Oh, hello. <laughs> Here to do another little tour today. We're going to be doing a little walk of uh, Union Square. Ever heard of it? It's actually a very important park, often, often overlooked, where uh, people are always talking about Central Park, they're always talking about the big parks in New York, but this is a very important one. So uh, if you're here to see all the touristy stuff, keep moving, baby, but this is as important as, and as New York as it gets. So uh, I'm gonna talk about this before we start. Uh, please like the video, just go ahead and give it a little thumbs up. Also uh, subscribe, that helps a lot. And uh, you know, also check out the Patreon, you know, that helps a lot too. Uh, that's all the business, gotta get it out of the way. Uh, here with Stewie, Stewie, how you doing? What's up? I like that. I like the uh, I like the uh, enthusiasm. But uh, yeah, we're gonna be doing a quick walk through uh, through Union Square. We're gonna be talking about all the history. This place is flooded in it. And then uh, we'll uh, I don't know. We'll go get some coffee or something. And sit around and people watch. Great place to people watch. But uh, on that, what do you think, Stewie? Should we do this? Let's do it. You're scaring me now. All right, let's do it. So Union Square is kind of dead smack in the middle here of downtown New York. It's got tons and tons of trains passing through, the four, five, six, the N, Q, R, the L, all of them pass through here. So it's actually a very common park for people to pass through and spend time in, which is one of the reasons why it's so important. You know, you can talk about Central Park all day long, but this is one where people are actually passing through and, and uh, you know, shopping and doing their stuff. You can look around me and you can see all the people here. This is actually kind of early in the morning. Uh, I did it on purpose so we don't get too messed with by all the people who hang out here. Uh, but you can see uh, it's called Union Square. People often erroneously think it's called Union Square because of the Union forces of the Civil War. That is not correct. It's called Union because it's the union of what, it, what used to be uh, Bowery. It's now Fourth Avenue and Broadway. In fact, Broadway's intersection with all the other main north-south thoroughfares is what creates most of the squares in New York. So in fact, when Broadway intersects with Fifth, it creates Madison Square, Sixth, Herald Square, Seventh, Times Square. Ah, that's a pretty good fact, right, Stewie? Pretty good. Thank didn't you. know that. Thank you. Uh, and just so you guys know, that's all due to the, uh, to the grid plan that was implemented in 1811. I've talked about this a billion times. One of the most important things that ever happened in New York history was when the grid was laid out, starting at Houston Street in the south, going all the way to the north end of the island. By the way, it is pronounced Houston, not Houston. So don't go up to anyone and tell them or ask them, how do I get to Houston Street? Because then they're going to know you're a tourist and they're going to assault you. Uh, we're now here in front of the statue of George Washington. This is actually the oldest statue uh, in the uh, New York City Parks collection. Henry Kirk Brown. This is actually George Washington entering into the city triumphantly on November 25th, uh, 18, sorry, November 25th, 1783. It was at the end of the uh, Civil War. Oh, God damn, I'm, I'm losing it. Not the end of the Civil War, the American Revolution. He came in uh, November 25th. 1783 on evacuation day to evacuate the British from the island. Oh, look at that. Because New York City was actually the headquarters of the British during the entire revolution. So he came back in triumphantly and booted them, baby. Evacuation day. Important day. Evacuation day, also the name of the 24-hour uh, period after you eat at a Chipotle. <laughs> All right, sorry about that, Stewie. Check it out. You got also, too, a lot of art here. This is the metronome. This is a piece from the uh, 1990s was put there. Uh, it used to have actually a clock there on there to the left. Now it's the uh, climate clock. You can see the, I think they're turning it on or something. Yeah, the climate clock. It's supposed to be the amount of time left until like, it's like the point of no return for the uh, climate change, uh, uh, the United States and the world and planet Earth or whatever. So let's just keep moving. Uh, we're gonna walk through the park here. We're gonna get some, some different lighting here, Stewie. So hope you're ready for that. Also too, to keep in mind this park Dates back. So in 1831, the state set aside this as public land. It wasn't until 1839 that it actually became a park. How are we looking? Good? And it was then that the city was currently marching northward. It was marching northward and people were starting to settle a little further north than what was then the city. The city was in lower Manhattan at the time. So like City Hall was kind of like the northern end of the, of the city until like 1810, 18, around that time. But as the city started to populate north, this area became like a fashionable district. People started to put their little mansions here, huh? Mansions populating the circular area around Union Square. Uh, that gave way to industry after World War, I'm sorry, after, this, after the uh, Civil War in the 1860s, industry kind of started to populate this area. But today it's like a magnet for all the, you know, different types of people in the city and in the, all over because they pass through here. They all pass through this area on their way to wherever they're going. Yes, yes, yes. 
There you got a statue. On the other side, you'll be able to see it a little better. The statue is the Marquis de Lafayette. I don't know if you guys know who that is. He helped actually win the American Revolution with the, uh, uh, you know, with his French forces that came over here. Big, they were a big fan of him. In fact, they named Lafayette uh, after him. This is the, the very important thoroughfare north-south here in Manhattan. That was actually sculpted by Auguste de Bartholdi, uh, Frederic Auguste de Bartholdi, who uh, sculpted the uh, Statue of Liberty. Pretty cool, huh? Oui, oui. Je, je parle français et anglais. Ah, sacre bleu. That's all I know how to say. Oui, uh, je parle un peu. Ah, okay. Oui, 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 oui. Oui, oui. So we're moving. We're going to keep moving here. I'm going to point out some stuff here on the side. And come out. Yeah. So there's a couple of important buildings here outside of the uh, park, which I'll point out. Over here to the left, though, I'm going to point this out. We'll go here. There's another statue by, uh, by Henry Kirk Brown. This is actually uh, Abraham Lincoln. Ah, you know who Abraham Lincoln is? Yeah, I've heard of him. <laughs> He's kind of, kind of popular, I don't know. But uh, this is Abraham Lincoln. Interesting trivia about Abraham Lincoln here. Um, in a park right nearby here, Gramercy Park, there is a statue of a man named Edwin Booth. Edwin Booth was a famous Shakespearean actor. Uh, He's like the most famous actor back in the day, like the 1860s, all that time. He was like the Tom Hanks back then. Anywho, that statue uh, is over in Gramercy Park. But interestingly enough, his brother, Edwin Booth, assassinated Abraham Lincoln. Edwin Booth's brother was John Wilkes Booth. Also interesting, though, is Edwin Booth himself saved Abraham Lincoln's brother's life, who fell onto train tracks, and he helped him get up just randomly. Isn't that crazy? A little bit of irony. see the people waiting to, to sick you and try to get you to donate to like all these causes. They set up all these like little salespeople around Union Square and they're always trying to get you to stop. It's become kind of an art form to come up with different excuses why you can't stop and talk to them and, and donate money to these things. It's like, come on, I'm in a rush. That's what I always say. Sorry, I'm in a rush. Here you have a couple of things. So this used to be the Union Square Savings Bank it was built in the early 1900s, but now today is a theater. It's called the Daryl Roth Theater. Daryl Roth, a very famous Broadway producer, uh, you know, produce like, I don't know, like 17 or something Pulitzer Prize winning plays. But this was home to like Fuerza Sabruta and all kinds of different off, it's another off-Broadway uh, theater. By the way, off-Broadway, all that means it's 100 to 499 seats. A Broadway show is over 500, 500 or more seats. That's all it is. And off-Broadway off is less than 100. Oh, uh, look at that. Giving you guys facts, baby. Facts for days. And then over here to the right, you're going to see this building here. That used to be the New York Film Academy. But that building was built in the 1920s, the late 1920s, to house Tammany Hall. The headquarters of Tammany Hall were here in Union Square. We're always here in Union Square. Tammany Hall dates back to the late 1700s when it was built as an anti-federalist kind of group. But then it gained a lot of power in the 1800s by catering to the Irish immigrants who were coming here. And by doing so, they kind of created this voting base that was very loyal to it. And using that voting base, it would promise favors to politicians who they helped get elected. I'm sorry, they would get favors from those politicians. And a lot of politicians use that. Hey, what's up, dude? <laughs> they would use that as like, a, as like leverage. So they would have these politicians get elected and then afterwards would just get tons and tons of favors from them. Hey, how are you? Hello, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? Get the hair, Look, looks great. So here now too, you're gonna have some, uh, some buildings that are very important. These buildings here are very typical of what was happening here in this neighborhood. So over here to the right, you have this building. This is, this is designed by Dunch and Yost in 1911. It's a beautiful example of Beaux-Arts, actually home to a W Hotel. Uh, but by the way, Beaux-Arts, I keep reminding you this, this is 1911, so if you see buildings in Beaux-Arts in New York, chances are it's from the turn of the 20th century because New York City kind of adopted that style. It's very European, you'll see this stuff all over Europe. But what happened was New York City was exploding at the end of the 1800s. For example, it had consolidated uh, all the different boroughs, right? So it exploded, became the second largest city in the world behind London by doing so. And uh, so it kind of took this style from Europe and was like, yeah, we're just as important as any of these European capitals. Give us some of that Beaux-Arts stuff. It's actually pronounced a vous a. Vous a. Oui, oui, je parle français et anglais. But uh, this is a good example of Beaux-Arts, very beautiful home to the W Hotel, which is owned by Marriott now. Then here to the left, you have the uh, Everett building. This is 1908. 
This is the Everett building. was actually designed by a man named Goldwyn uh, Starrett, who, uh, who actually worked for Daniel Burnham, who was a very famous Chicago architect who also designed the Flatiron building. Not this guy, Daniel Burnham, all right? So don't go correcting me in the comments. You know, guys, you guys need to chill out, by the way, with all that stuff. Look, some of the stuff, I'm doing this all on the fly, so just listen, enjoy it. We're just walking around. It's nice. We're just hanging out, all right? Relax. And over here, you have the Century Building, which was finished in the 1880s, early 1880s, and it houses, obviously, Barnes & Noble. Ah, Barnes & Noble, which, by the way, started in New York City in 1886 at Cooper Union, which I actually covered in my East Village video. Sick plug, baby. Come on. And here comes all this noise. Uh, you know, I, I tried. I tried to file a permit with the city to get them to, uh, you know, shut everything down for this very high-budget shoot. Uh, didn't work. But just so you know, it started at Cooper Union by a guy named Hines, who then brought on a clerk with the last name Noble. Noble buys in, becomes a partner, and then buys out Hines, and then gets his own partner named Barnes. Barnes and Noble. It's like this little partnership of bookstore. And, uh, you know, started in New York. Today, it's a retail chain that's getting beat, just like most retail chains, by Amazon, unfortunately. Uh, so that's it right there. Pretty cool. And now we're going to walk through, and we're going to walk through the... Uh, green, little green market here that's, that's here every uh, few times a week. Started in the 1970s. Oh, before that, I'm gonna show you guys something over here. So this plaque says that all this little grove area is dedicated to the victims of the Armenian Genocide. In case you don't know what the Armenian Genocide is, uh, 1915, so what happened was in 1908, this group called the Young Turks took, a, took a hold of the Ottoman Empire. In the Ottoman Empire, this group, the Armenians, uh, were, were present since like, you know, they were absorbed into the Ottoman Empire in like the 15th century, right? And they were always Christian. The Ottoman Empire was not. And so they were always persecuted. Then in the late 1800s, they started to push for more rights and they were getting them. In 1908, the uh, Young Turks took uh, control of the Ottoman Empire. And then in 1913, a radicalist wing of the Young Turks started to kind of push back against these, uh, these Armenians. Then in 1915, the Russians defeat the Ottoman Empire in a battle during World War I. And then they push in to the Ottoman Empire with some Armenians who had kind of defected to help them out. Using that as a pretext, the Young Turks start to really, really persecute them and basically push them all out on these death marches that claim the lives of, you know, I think like what, one and a half million Armenians plus some Greeks, Assyrians. So it was a complete mess. But people forget, they don't even realize that it happened. Two million people were just killed systematically pretty much uh, during World War I and a little bit after. So. This uh, tiny little plaque is what, uh, I guess, commemorates that loss of life. Ooh, baby, that's dark. Look at these flowers. All right, let's keep walking. We're going to walk. And, oh, and also, too, let's show the, I'm going to show this building. This is the building I was telling you about, too. This was the building for the uh, Tammany Hall. By the way, Tammany Hall, one of the most famous names associated with Tammany Hall, is uh, William Boss Tweed. If you guys know who William Boss Tweed is, he was the head of Tammany Hall and one of its heydays in, like, the 1860s. It pretty much had two heydays. Its, its influence kind of waned. Uh, in the 1930s when Fiorello LaGuardia became uh, mayor and kind of curbed their influence. Here you have a freehold. This is like a little restaurant, a little overpriced. But they have one in Brooklyn. That's where it started. Also keep in mind that Union Square hasn't always been a nice little park like this. It used to just be really just like a union of the streets. It was like this little oval, uh, more like a functional kind of square than anything. And this was in like 1839 it became that park. <laughs> But in 1872, uh, they actually hired Calvert Vox and Frederick Law Olmsted, who were designers of Central Park, to kind of give it a little bit of makeover. And it was kind of made up nice, you know? And here you have the beginning. Uh, this is Broadway, cutting up to the north. If we continued up this way, we would be walking on what's called the Ladies' Mile. It was because this was a part of Broadway with, back in the late 1800s. It was OK for women to walk unaccompanied. It wasn't considered like, you know, I don't know, slutty, I guess, to walk around by yourself. That's kind of crazy. Times they've changed, huh? All right. And the reason it was uh, a place called Ladies Miles because there's lots of shopping there. When we go shopping, all the stores. Pretty nice. You want to buy some fruit, Stewie? Should I buy you some fruit? Yeah, we'll get some after. Yeah, that's good, man. You're very, very focused. So these, they have to do this. They do this market three times a week. Over here to the right, this is kind of funny. So this Chase Bank is where there used to be an actual um, restaurant. There used to be a restaurant called the Union Square Coffee Shop. You remember that? Yep. So I used, I used to go there all the time, actually. And I went there, like, I used to live in East Village, and I would go there all the time, and I befriended, like, the uh, bartender there, who was a very nice uh, woman. 
and uh, really smart, really, uh, you know, you know, had lots of opinions and everything. We would talk about, you know, comedy and, and politics. Go figure, uh, a couple years later, that's Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Kind of crazy. AOC, we used to work at that little bar here, a little burrito place. Yeah, if you're watching AOC, congrats. You did it. So we're going to keep walking here through the inside. of tons of people, man. This always creeps me out. I hope no one tries to take the camera, Stewie. I got big muscles. All right. Stop bragging, you son of a gun. Let's turn off here. I'm going to turn off here to the left. So this is kind of interesting. This is a temperance fountain. This was built in the 1880s, so uh, the temperance movement kind of had its roots in like the 1820s, 1830s, when like there was this religious revival in the United States, all these traveling preachers, people preaching like purity and all that stuff. And then it slowly started to pick up. By 1860 and 18, to, the eight, to 1900, it kind of became more and more mainstream. Before that, it was a little radical. Uh, we all know that it ended in prohibition in 1919, which lasted for about 10 years. Uh, but in the 1880s, they were building these kinds of like mountains all over the place. We have one in, uh, there's one in, uh, uh, in uh, what's it, uh, uh, Central Park. The Bethesda Fountain is kind of rooted in that purity and that cleanliness idea. Oh, by the way, Central Park, cover that in a video too, baby. Mm -hmm. But anyways, it became like a real like uh, movement and they put fountains everywhere because it's water. Instead of drinking beer, you drink water. What a concept. I myself don't really drink a whole lot because uh, I'm a real stand-up guy. Has nothing to do with having bad hangovers. I'm getting old. You know, it's tough. Ever since I turned 24, my uh, hangovers have gotten a little too bad. I'm only 24. How are we doing, Stewie? I like it. You use good projection. You're, you speak from your diaphragm. I could learn a lesson from you. You have the different groups of, uh, so lots of Orthodox Jews that hang out in areas like this because of all the foot traffic. And they'll ask you if you're Jewish. And the reason is because they want to they do a mitzvah and, uh, and do a, uh, a prayer with you, the, the, the tefillin. I'm butchering that, sorry. But they wrap this like leather band around you and they, uh, you know, they do a prayer that way. It's kind of cool. So this is kind of interesting too. Gandhi, oh, look at that, Gandhi. So this statue was put here in the 1980s. Remember, this park has always been kind of a center point. So there's always been protests and movements that have kind of culminated here most recently with the uh, protests against George Floyd. I mean, you had, you know, dozens and dozens of thousands of people just congregating around this park. But this was put here in the 1980s to honor oh, Gandhi, you guys know him. I don't really need to explain him, but uh, what's interesting is that the keynote when they delivered this uh, piece, uh, Bayard Rustin was actually the keynote address uh, speaker. I may not know that name, but it's important to know names like his. He was actually one of the men responsible for creating the March on Washington, one of Martin Luther King's closest advisors. But I bring him up because in any movement, there's always the superstars of people like MLK and Gandhi, but they would be nothing without the people beneath them and around them helping them to do what they did. They would say so themselves all the time, like it's not just about me, the movements aren't just about me, it's about what we're standing for and what they eventually die for. But Bayard Rustin, a very important uh, figure in the civil rights movement. A lot of people don't even know who he is, but he was there speaking when this uh, statue was dedicated. Kind of cool. All right, let's keep going. It's interesting too that you have all the protests and stuff here at the same place where Tammany Hall was centered. This like, you know, thing of corruption, this whole like, you know, beacon of corruption back in the day. But Tammany Hall no longer around, so it's nice to know that corruption no longer exists. How good does that feel? And now we're gonna be walking by a lot of the like chess players. You have all the chess players here who will do you the solid of taking your money, uh, $5 just to, to be beaten to, beaten to bloody pulp in chess. Pretty good deal, but they're all pretty good. A lot of them moved here because, the, so the spot where it was originally was Greenwich Village in uh, Washington Square Park. But they did lots of uh, remodeling on that corner of the park in like the early 2000s. So a lot of them just came here because there's a lot of traffic here and they, they set up shop here. I actually covered that in my chess video. Oh, sick plug. You know, people make fun of me for plugging these videos. Hey, 
you gotta, you gotta connect the dots, man. There's videos all over in the whole catalog. You can learn all this stuff. Just take a dive, baby. Go down a little rabbit hole of Tom DMYC videos. I talk about chess in New York, which is kind of cool. This is interesting. So these towers are the Zeckendorf Towers. They were built in 1987. They're named after William Zeckendorf, who had died just a little bit before they were dedicated. Uh, William Zeckendorf, one of the most famous real estate developers in New York City history. He actually owned the land. He was going to build like a competitor to Rockefeller Center on this land that was on the east side. Eventually ended up giving it to the Rockefellers for the creation of the UN headquarters. Ah, oh, William Zeckendorf, very important name in New York real estate, which pretty much runs the city. So I guess that's something you got to keep in mind. And here you have the entrance to the subway. Uh, like I said, Union Square, very important subway hub. Remember, the subway didn't open until 1904. So all this area really started to get kind of filled up around that time, as, as did the north end of the island. The subways were really, really spread development around New York City. Uh, but like I said, so the, the trajectory of, of Union Square, 1831 set aside as state land, 1839 created as a park. After Civil War, it becomes more industrial. You have buildings like the Germania, buildings like the Century, buildings like the, uh, the, uh, the Everett Building, those buildings we saw at the northeast corner. Today, it is very uh, retail, lots of people passing through a hub in New York. There are very few New Yorkers who don't pass through here on a regular basis because of its location and its, you know, centrality. Uh, but very important protest uh, spot, place where people like speak out. You have the Gandhi statue, you have the Lincoln, all these different things are here because it represents something. Uh, in fact, the first Labor Day uh, march and parade was held here uh, in 1882. Uh, Labor Day didn't become a holiday until the 1890s. Also, Earth Day was celebrated here, the first one in 1970. So it's always been a very important place to kind of protest and speak out. We did a little roundabout. So we're going to walk up here, just kind of where we started the video. You know, we did a quick little loop. These parks are important to know. Like I said, we can focus on things like Central Park and, you know, Prospect Park or whatever. But it's places like this that people are really passing through on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's pretty much it, guys. We're going to go ahead and end here where we started. This is the Washington statue, the Evacuation Day, Washington. George Washington was sworn in here as first president in New York City because this was the capital of the United States briefly. Ah, I don't know if you guys knew that. 1789 is where he was sworn in. But anyways, uh, we're pretty much done. It's a really good uh, place to come hang out. Lots of humanity here, baby. This is where you come to see all the different walks of life in New York. You can come to get beaten chess. You can go to buy your fruits. You can bring your dog to the dog run. You can just sit and yell about the CIA planting a chip in your brain. Fit right in with everybody here. Uh, but here you go. You got uh, George Washington behind me. I don't want to ramble too much, but uh, this is what's important. You got to come see these types of places in New York because Central Park's great. Don't get me wrong. Washington Square is great. But this is another example of a place that people just pass through every single day. This is a place that people really live through. They don't come here all the time to, you know, frolic or whatever, but they do. But other people come for other things too. Uh, but this is where people who live here pass through. <sighs> I'm rambling. I don't know what to tell you. I, uh, I really got to just end this. Please like the video. That helps a lot. Uh, please subscribe. That helps a lot. It helps with analytics. I don't even know what that word means, but I'm pretty sure it's important. Also, please check out the Patreon. That helps uh, a ton. Helps support the video. Help, helps keep uh, Stewie living in a penthouse apartment uh, on Central Park West, baby. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. He's living the life. Don't, uh, don't let him tell you otherwise. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I'm going to go hang out. Me and Stu are going to go grab some coffees. I'm going to go, uh, you know, walk through the green market, pick up some pears and uh, fresh bread. All right, I got to stop. All right, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. See y'all later. Sick.